I'm Don Dixon. I want to thank you for joining me today. We're about ready to jump start our study on uh, the habits of a game fish and what the heck it takes for you and I to catch them. Uh, we've decided to take the next six or eight weeks when it's sort of ice cold everywhere but here <laughs> where most folks aren't doing a lot of fishing and it give us time to put in a little study time so that when spring comes and lakes and the rivers thaw out we'll be ready to go fishing and have a completely different season this year where our where our success rate just jumps 100 percent so that's the idea we're going to be starting that but something has come up i've had some questions over the last just the last couple of and I felt like I need to go over it and mention it for many of you. You already know this, but for most of you, you don't know. And I don't know that it's really necessary to talk about, but in a sense, I think it is. I need to clear it up. Somebody wrote in and said, you know, I'm interested in structure fishing, and I consider myself a structure fisherman. He said, but you keep talking about Buck Perry and his book and his material, and on the front of the book it says spoon plug. And he said, I'm a little confused by that. And the reason is, so many people today that are familiar with the term spoon plugging, they associate it with a certain lure, and they think of guys that troll around the lake with a certain lure, and that's all they ever do. And that's what spoon plugging is. Well, that's the furthest thing from the truth. So I thought, so there's no misunderstanding when we're talking about knowledge is the key and so on and so forth, and we're using the term structure fishing all the time. It's important that we make a distinguishing uh, definition here for you. Back when Buck came out with all of his findings, back then there were only two types of lures that were built. One were spoons, metal spoons like a daredevil, and all the other lures were wooden plugs. They hadn't even invented plastic back then. Wooden plugs and metal spoons, two types of lures, spoons and plugs. So when Buck talked about knowledge is the key and he wanted to have some sort of, wanted to have some sort of catchy name for his discoveries, after a time, he just settled in on the word spoon plugging. So he called the total knowledge of a fish spoon plugging. Back then, I'm sure it made a lot of sense. <laughs> there was no television. There was no ESPN. There were no bass tournaments. There were no 75 mile an hour boats for fishing. None of that stuff was around. Fishing meant going out rowing a boat somewhere and throwing a spoon or throwing some plugs or fishing with live bait. That was it. So he just called his knowledge spoon plugging. Successful fishing. That's what it was supposed to be. Well, over the years, because when he invented a lure that would do certain things that he needed to, to be doing, when he invented that lure, the natural name for it, of course, was a spoon plug. Just made sense to him back in the day. Most people today never even heard of a spoon plug. And they really, most of them haven't ever heard of spoon plugging. But yet it set the stage for all of today's fishing. Over the years, I told Buck, you know, I was, sometimes I was so ignorant myself. That, I said things I probably shouldn't have said. But I told Buck back in somewhere around the mid 80s. I said, Buck, you know, everybody's got the wrong idea about spoon plug. I wish you'd have called it something else. I actually said that to him. <laughs> he didn't like that much. <laughs> it wasn't that he was angry with me, but he was a little disappointed, you know, that I would even suggest that maybe he should have done something different to <laughs> But at any rate, I said, the problem today, Buck, is people think it's just dragging a lure around the lake. When you say spoon plug, people don't get it. And he said, well, you know, the term structure and structure fishing, which 
writers were starting to write about structure fishing. He said, I don't mind them calling it structure fishing. He said, but you know and I know there's a distinction there. And he said, it's valid. The people that call themselves spoon pluggers that fish structure, they are, in a sense, spoon pluggers are structure fishermen. He said, but since all the other writers have started talking about structure, most fishermen today call themselves structure fishermen because it's the trendy term. So here's the deal. Spoon pluggers are structure fishermen, Buck said. But all, quote, structure fishermen aren't spoon pluggers. They're not knowledge. They know a little bit. They're fishing a point somewhere. They call themselves a structure fisher. But when I coined the word spoon plug, and I was talking about the total knowledge of a fish and what it takes for you and I to catch it, there shouldn't be any hang up on what we call it. I said, I could care less call it spoon plug and structure fishing, modern day fish, you can call it anything you want. But knowledge is the key to success, period. And I don't mean just a little knowledge. I mean you need to start at letter A and go all the way through letter Z. You've got to know it all if you truly want to be different. If you truly want to be a great fisherman, you need all of the knowledge that's in the materials. I knew to never say that again. <laughs> but today, you know, Buck's been gone since 2005. And his stuff and, and millions of fishermen are still around doing what he suggested we need to do. But today, if I said, okay, I'm going to have a study course on spoon plugging. Nobody would show up. And it's unfortunate. Because all it is is a simple term. But the, the definition of that term is the total knowledge of the fish. Total knowledge of the fish. What he'll do and what he won't do. And how you and I can best catch him. That's what the definition of that word is. So, whatever you do, you old time spoon pluggers, don't get hung up. Don't think that you're some elite group of people and nobody else catches fish. That's not true. Uh, on the other hand, you guys that say you're structure fishermen, if you have no idea about how to map and interpret structure and the effect of, of weather and water conditions on a fish, you can't uh, differentiate between the seasonal movements of a walleye, seasonal movements of a white bass, seasonal movements of... If you don't have all that information, you never really be in that elite class. You need to have all of it. But I don't care if you call yourself a structure fisherman. I call myself a structure fisherman. So for 10 years, I referred to everything I did, structure fishing workshop, structure fishing school, because I didn't want there to be a misunderstanding and have people not show up when I knew that we had all of the right information that they were going to ever need. And as we get into this study, all I'm going to be talking about is the scientifically proven facts concerning the habits of a game fish and what it takes to put them in a boat. That's all I'm going to be talking about. Don't care what you call it. I call it successful fishing. So thanks for being with me today. It was just a little heads up on all of that. And I'm looking forward to getting started on this study. So thanks for being with me today. I appreciate you all. You know that. And I want you to follow us on uh Instagram, like us on Facebook, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate you, and we'll see you the next time.